Most of us aim to live a fit and healthy lifestyle, but what does it take? Are investors keen to inject their money in this particular industry here in Rwanda? On this particular episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, we will tackle that and we will see how resilient the industry has been towards these tough economic times. I will be your host, Narengo Afiana Muthoni. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced the closure of gyms and fitness centers to reduce the risk of infection. And according to statistics by Research and Markets, the weight training equipment sales grew by 307% globally in the first half of 2020. To know the impact that it has had in Rwanda, we talked to key players in the sector. Like many other gym businesses actually all of them in rwanda um we have been closed for three months now more than three months actually uh, so obviously we have been impacted in many different ways uh, one of them being that we have had to you know make um many changes to the way we operate to make sure we adjust to the ongoing situation um Another thing is that the members are very frustrated, which we understand, because we have no idea when we'll be able to reopen the gym. Before the lockdown, actually since the beginning of the year, 2020, we had around 2,000 members, 2,000 active members. But um, f uh, during the lockdown, as we you know, um, ch check the statist statistics, uh, we've been down, we're down to 700, around 700 members. We had about 320 active memberships, um, yeah, by the time of mid-March before we close, and uh, all that are put on pause now, so yeah, uh, through a coalition of gym owners in Kigali. Um, some have been uh, lucky to get their uh, rent waived completely for the months we closed in the lockdown. Um, maybe I don't know about after, but uh, for us, we, we, we have to cover rent so that we can secure the, yeah, the roof uh, for the next time we open. So if I say last year, when things were normal, people were busy doing their businesses, uh, some traveling, but right now everyone was at home. So it was a good time for, for clients to track their progress, to, to improve their fitness level. So we just tried to keep those measures, uh, putting our mask on, but during our training we just tried to remove them and keeping a meter in between us, two or three two or one, and then we make sure that we wash our hands, we sanitize our equipment that we are going to do every after use. According to Statista, the global fitness and health club industry generates more than 100 billion US dollars in revenue per year. The industry is massive, mainly because the target audience is people of all ages, gender and socioeconomic classes. In Rwanda, the industry is young but it has potential to be a key revenue generator for the country. But the investment initially, it's, uh, it, it goes up to 80,000 yes. US dollars, putting uh, um, other details in uh, later on. But uh, from that time, the gym has grown up to 40%, so it's no longer about that price anymore. So yeah, it's, uh, we used to occupy half of the floor you will see on the other side. Now we occupy the full floor. I can say that the, like a, something like the size of Cali Fitness is definitely something that has um, a little short than a hundred thousand US dollars in a year in sales. So we used to have only hotel gyms like Serena. They were like really countable. Like you could just name them. And then slowly, slowly, uh, people, independent investors started uh, looking into how they can have uh, fitness facilities. Now we go on the number of eleven in Kigali. So from just 2009 up to now. So that's uh, impressive in 10 years. It's not a lot. Uh, we still have this huge demand. There is, uh, uh, the culture is growing. So people um, are being um, interested more and more. We can say that we are uh, laying down the tiles that maybe future investors will really benefit a lot from. If you have like five clients, five to six clients, you make like, $600. In 2016, 
Imano Sports Limited, which makes made in Rwanda sportswear, joined the active lifestyle apparel industry in Rwanda. Four years later, the company is slowly competing with other brands by exporting their products to Kenya and the U.S. So my background is in uh, sports. You know, I was a uh, former uh, uh, professional athlete um, in athletics. So when I came here to Rwanda, uh, you know, with a mission to get into sports and, and coaching youth, I saw a lot of uh, uh, kids and youth that had no access to you know, decent sportwear. So that's when I came in and was like, hey, look, man, maybe we can figure out some way to make some clothes and just make it here in Africa, make it in Rwanda. And so like I never intended to put a lot of money into this, you know, just kind of see how it went. I put in maybe like $10,000, you know, within the first uh, like six months, you know, just kind of invested into fabric. And then and I knew that within six months, we'll be just learning, you know, recruiting some tailors and work with them, you know, learning how to make the designs, the clothes. So then uh, after six months, it kind of took off on its own. And we started doing large orders for, for different uh, organizations and companies. And I never had to put like, you know, any more money into it again. So we, you know, we still do this. We make clothes on demand. So like this is a showroom here, so we just like to, for, you know, folks to come in and they see what they like and then they place an order. In 2019, I think might have put in around 130 million. It's, it's growing slow in Rwanda. I think the market is a bit small, but we have picked up sales a lot um, with uh, overseas sales. You know, you know, so sales from the U.S. and Canada have uh, picked up a lot. You know, and Kenya has just picked up a lot. So now we do a lot of global shipping. So th there is where I think it's kind of uh, supplemented the, the, the small market, but growing market like here in Rwanda. As part of ways to sensitize people to live a healthy lifestyle, the government of Rwanda started an initiative where twice a month, parts of Kigali City turn into a car-free zone where residents engage in physical activities. We gauge if the culture has been adopted and some of the challenges in the industry. I think we have a good government because uh, I think we are in a few countries in Africa that you see people meet together and train, like we have Cafe Day. It was, it was once, once in a month, but now they have put it two times in a month. People meet, uh, they train, and it's a good vibe, you know. Mm. Yep. It shows that the government cares for its citizens. The biggest challenge we've had since we opened is, you know, like, getting people to understand like with Rwandans, the, uh, the culture in Rwanda, um, uh, it, like people don't really um, sit well with the idea of like, hey, keeping consistency, uh, keeping gym consistency. Like we really, our personal trainers really have to sell themselves to get a person to, you know, uh, want to get trained. So like um, we're working towards, you know, changing mindsets. Just uh still faced with the challenge of making quality you know clothes and consistently making quality clothes has been a huge challenge here it's still about two and a half years into the business and we still <laughs> can't get it right um so trying to invest in more education skills you know for the workers you know, you know has been something i've been trying to really like push and figure out you know is there a school here in Rwanda that, that, that has fashion design things like that um, has been a huge challenge here. S secondly, I would say j just a small market um, where uh, it's a market that is not really like familiar with uh, sportswear. So I think the government should help um, gym owners or gym centers to get like on, on, on taxes, to reduce taxes on gym equipment so that they can ship them and then move after that people can invest more like they can invest in gym centers or fitness life because there's this kind of uh, collaboration with the government in response to the crisis a variety of digital offerings have sprung up to ensure people can continue exercises while social distancing we get to understand how digital platforms are being leveraged at a time like this during the whole lockdown, uh, social media has basically been the only way anyone could 
stay in touch with their loved ones. So it's not different for us. Uh, through social media, we have been able to like um, communicate with the members, uh, share updates on what's going on. We ran multiple um, m uh, multiple virtual classes to make sure our members are staying uh, healthy, even though they have to stay at home for a long time. So we, you know, also offered. Um, uh, healthy eating tips through so social media, um, you know, um, work from home tips and more content like that, you know, to make sure we help them get a, a work-life balance, even though they are home uh, in these uncertain times. Our digital platforms are very needed in this time because, as we know, we can't go to the gym, we can't work out, and some people cannot even, don't know what to do, don't know where to start from. So digital f platforms are there to imp like to push or motivate or show people, right? What they can do from their homes, what they can do from anywhere, right? Because there's this thing of Instagram Live, videos, YouTube, everything that shows how you can work out from home. We give them the schedule, like let's say Monday you do this, Tuesday you do this. Nowadays, Consumers are engaging with fitness and healthy companies more than ever before in an attempt to improve their lifestyles. For the industry to reach its full potential, more investment is needed. I don't see it. I mean, we do get a lot of interest from, you know, certain kind of investors and people who want, you know, they like the idea, but I think uh, they don't really understand like, what, what goes on behind the scene. I mean, you know, making the clothes and actually making it, you know, work for the customer. So I think it's going to take some time before like, people actually start trying to invest in and like, doing their own sports for stuff. Uh, but then again, I mean, the competition is always good. You know, we, it causes us to innovate. So when somebody else is coming up with their own stuff, you know, we welcome it, you know, and it, it causes us to keep on producing, producing and making nice, nice, better stuff. You know? To be fit is very important. And, and I would say it is as important as, as staying alive is. So if you care about waking up and breathing and not dying, staying alive, going to bed. Um, you should also, uh, there's this quote that I like um, that says that a few people have, everybody dies, we all die, but a few people have lived. So I would say that people who have discovered fitness, uh, the earlier the better. So people who have discovered fitness live a better life. But um, we are uh, major players in, 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 in making life, people's lives better. So therefore, when you look at the numbers, the sizes, so we play a, a significant role in the economy as well. Well, there you have it. You've heard from key players in Rwanda's fitness industry on the impact that COVID-19 has had, as well as the investments that are needed for this industry to reach its full potential. If you have any feedback, questions or suggestions, do write to us on Twitter at CNBC Africa, or you can tag me directly at Fimuthoni. Thank you so much for watching it. Bye for now.